of the Trinity this morning. It's also about Memorial Day, a time when we honor those men and women who gave and still give the ultimate sacrifice of their lives so that we can be free. We are able and worship the Lord together. very soon, soon and very soon, we are going to see the King. Soon and very soon, we are going to see the King. Hallelujah, hallelujah, we're going to see the King. No more crying there. now pray to the God who is God over our past, our present, and our future destiny with him. Oh God, your name is veiled in mystery, yet we dare to call you Father. Your Son was begotten before all ages, yet is born among us in time. Your Holy Spirit fills the whole creation, yet is poured forth now into our hearts. Because you have made us and loved us and called us by name, draw us more deeply into your divine life, that we may glorify you through your Son in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Well, good morning, everyone, and everybody online. It was a close call about being outdoors this morning. We had to make the call yesterday, and it just, it, we might have been able to slip it in, but it's still a little bit cool. But next Sunday, it's 80 degrees. We will be outdoors. So, as long as that forecast holds up. You know. As I was reflecting uh, this week on today's scripture from St. Paul's letter to the Ephesians, that's what we're working with this summer. It struck me that each of us has only three days to live. Now, before you panic that you're going to die before the Browns win the Super Bowl this year, <laughs> let me explain. Regardless of who we are, what our backgrounds might be, what we may have accomplished in our life, or any other factor, the fact is we have three days that will encompass our life, yesterday, today, and tomorrow. With this reality in mind, Paul wrote the following words to the early believers in the town of Ephesus 
the ruins of which are still existence today there in modern day Turkey. And this is what he wrote. This is from the second chapter of Ephesians. Once you were spiritually dead because of your disobedience to God, you used to live like so many in the world who disregards God's will for their lives. Let's face it, we were all deserving of God's anger. But God is so rich in mercy and loved us so much that in him we have redemption. That is, that we were delivered and saved through the blood of Jesus, which resulted in the forgiveness and complete pardon of our sins. He has made known to us the mystery of his will, which he revealed to, in Christ with regard to the end of history, to bring all things together in Christ, both things in the heavens and things on earth. If you look carefully at this passage, Paul is basically describing kind of our spiritual past, our present, what awaits us in the future. To one degree or another, I'm sure that like me, you can look to the past and recognize attitudes, words, behaviors that we're certainly not very happy about and for which we might feel some guilt or shame. And to be honest, there's a good chance that perhaps, without even realizing it, we were too, li too often living by the standards of the fallen world. It might still be if it weren't for one thing. God's grace revealed to us in and through Jesus Christ. Paul likes to use the phrase, in him, or in Christ. In fact, he uses it like 80 or 90 times throughout his writings. He, he uses those terms to depict the turning point and how we go about transitioning from a life guided by the so-called wisdom of the world into a life that is shaped and formed by Jesus Christ to live in him. No matter what has happened in our past, no matter the mistakes that we have made, no matter how guilty or shameful we might feel about certain past actions or decisions, the moment we give it all to Jesus, we receive his mercy and love. We are not only forgiven, we're also in right standing with God and we open ourselves to the power in our lives that Pastor Eric talked about last week, the power of the Holy Spirit. What becomes clearer to a person at that point is that even though we continue to live in a fallen world, which we do every day, our present identity is now in Christ, to be able to live in the world but not of the world, to live in Christ. And his word should increasingly form our actions and our decisions. You know that when Christ hung on the cross, was near his death, he uttered three very important words. It is finished. What he meant was that he had paid the ultimate and total price for the sins of humankind. Nothing more was needed. It was finished. The door was now open to anyone to come into a personal relationship with God. There was nothing else that any person had to do in order to be reconciled with God. Jesus finished it. So any good works on our part, the things we do that are positive, good, and genuine, and helpful, it's no longer about doing those things to somehow earn God's forgiveness and mercy. It's already been done. But those actions are now a daily expression of our gratitude for his infinite love and mercy. So anything we do that is pleasing and good and helpful and generous and whatever, it earns nothing. What it does is expresses thanksgiving for how God has loved us so much in Christ. No matter what our past has been, our present reality should be about one thing, and that's our desire to spread God's love and compassion in our daily relationships and encounters with other people. <clears throat> so if the past is one of the three days we have to live, then of course the present is the second. 
however long you and I have left on our earthly journey. For some of us, that might be many years. For some of us, not so long. Makes no difference. In Christ, we have the opportunity right here and now, every day, to do whatever we can to make visible the kingdom of God in our midst. That is, very simply, building relationships with others marked by kindness, respect, understanding, forgiveness, and justice. One of the benefits of being in a growing relationship with Jesus is that we live with a deepening awareness of those in need around us, the poor, the lonely, the hungry, the thirsty, the sick, the suffering, the bereaved, the hopeless, and those feeling alienated from others. In daily prayer that nurtures that relationship with Jesus, we not only grow closer to Jesus himself, but in Christ, we get into a growing connection with those for whom the Lord has always had a special place in his heart. The lost, the hurting, the downtrodden, the oppressed, the homeless. That's the present reality of living in Jesus. Not about earning anything, not about proving anything, but it's all about thanking the Lord and being in relationship with him in doing what he wants us to do, to care for those around us, whoever they might be, to help build his kingdom on this earth. Even though sometimes it's hard to see that kingdom with all the junk in the world today, we have that opportunity every day to help build the kingdom. So that's our present reality. When it comes to the third day that we have, we're talking about our future. We're talking about our final destiny. We're talking about eternal life. When any one of us chooses Jesus Christ to live in him, we have the absolute assurance of what awaits us after we physically die. In Paul's first letter to the Corinthians, he wrote these words. I has not seen nor has ear heard, or has it entered into the heart of humanity the things that God has prepared for those who love him. To live on this earth with the confident expectation of what awaits us in eternity frees us up to live fearlessly for the right reasons, because we have nothing to ultimately worry about when we take our last breath. In Christ, that's already been won for us. In Christ, nothing more we have to do to prove anything to God. In accepting Christ, we have the assurance of what awaits us. How great it will be, as this morning's scripture proclaims, when Christ will bring all things together, both in heaven and on earth. When our time comes to leave this earth, I believe there's one thing that every one of us wants to know, that we made a difference in the lives of our family and our friends. We want to believe that this world is a better place for us having been here. I can assure you that if you've given your life to Jesus Christ, and have trust him to guide your daily actions and decisions then you will have fulfilled God's purpose for why he gave you life to begin with. Life is always worthwhile when we live it with purpose and meaning. And the greatest purpose and meaning in your life and mine is found in Jesus Christ. And that's why he said to us, I am the way, the truth, and the life. So our future is rest assured in Christ. Our future has been established for us. So we can live life, as I said, without any fear of what's gonna to happen to us after we die. We kind of all fear a little bit the process of dying. No one looks forward to what that might be. 
but in talking to hundreds of people in my lifetime who were dying, no one ever said to me that they were really totally afraid of dying. What they said they were afraid of was the sickness and the process of dying, and I think we all sense that. But when it comes to our actual leaving this earth, when we're doing that, we're doing it with Jesus. And as surely as Jesus was raised from the dead, we are raised. So we can live fearlessly. We can live with great purpose and meaning as long as we have life on this earth. So if it's about accepting Jesus Christ, then I'm offering to any of you here this morning, and especially to any of you online, that if you've not intentionally committed your life to Jesus Christ, or if you simply wish to deepen and renew your spiritual relationship with him, there's going to be an opportunity to do that this summer. Along with Pastor Eric and myself, Gene Aspinwall of our church community, we will walk alongside of you in fulfilling your desire to draw closer to Jesus. If that process includes your desire to be baptized for the first time in your life or to renew your original baptism as an adult, we will prepare you for that special moment of grace. We weren't able to do that last year because of the pandemic. But we can do it this year. We can do it now. And I would hope that as you listen to your heart today, if you feel that, there, that you need to draw closer, or if you feel maybe for the very first time in your life you need to make that commitment, if you feel led to the waters of baptism, then please contact me, Pastor Eric, or Gene Aspinwall. You can call us, see us here at church, those of you online, just email us, whatever. And we will make sure this happens. For all of us, regardless of what our situation is, now is the time to make sure that we are living in Christ. We can't wait. If you don't feel you're living in Christ, now's the time. Because not, tomorrow's not guaranteed to us, is it? What we have is today. The only tomorrow guaranteed for us is in Christ, we go to the kingdom. But so if, if this is where you're at in your life right now, and you're looking for greater purpose and meaning. You're looking to be able to live every day with a, you know, just a, a, a better feeling, an open heart, a, a desire to make this truly a better world. Then now is the time to come closer to Jesus. We want to all be living in him, to live together, to serve him on this earth. awesome he can move mountains keep me in the valley hide me from the rain my God is awesome heals me when I'm broken string where I've been weakened forever Great. 
Praise God. Praise God. Please stand as you are able. I invite everybody watching live stream to uh, get some bread, wine, or juice at this time. And we'd like to uh, share in communion together. We praise you and thank you, gracious God for teaching us your ways and leading us in your paths. We praise you and thank you, merciful God, for drawing us to Jesus and making us your own. We praise you and thank you, most loving God, for this, your most precious gift, Jesus, your beloved one. We remember your care for us, great God, and all your manifold blessings. We remember your promises to us, and the fulfillment of those promises in Jesus, our Lord. He is the obedient one, humiliated and put to death. He is the suffering servant, reconciling us to you. He is the one on whom your favor rests, vindicated and glorified in his rising from the dead. Trusting him, we find our hearts are fed. Loving him, we find the courage to hope. Following him, we find joy in life. United with him, we are taken up into the mystery of your everlasting life. Thus, once again, we remember Jesus, how on the night before he died, he gathered with his friends for one last meal. We remember how he took bread, blessed it, broke it, gave it to his disciples and said, this is my body broken for you. Remember how he took wine, blessed it, gave it to his disciples, saying, This is my blood shed for you and for all people. Do this in memory of me. As he was with them then, so he is with us now. We remember his life and death and rising from the dead to be with you, great God, as Lord of all. We remember your promise to be with us always in word and spirit and in the breaking of the bread as we wait in joyful hope for the final fulfillment you have promised, we look to you and humbly ask upon our church and its leaders, grant us courage and wisdom and strength to be the sign of your caring presence in our world. Pour out your spirit upon our family and friends. Grant peace and joy in the loving service we give to one another. Pour out your spirit upon the sick and the suffering Grant consolation and hope and healing through your presence and love. Pour out your spirit upon those who have wandered far from you. Bring us all at last into the light of your presence. 
Draw us all to Jesus in your eternal love. Bring us together as one, one family, one world, and one community of love. O God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, in whose name we are baptized and to whose fellowship we have been received, we cling in faith to you, the only God. We praise you, dear Father, for having loved us and sent your Son to die for our sins. We praise you, dear Jesus, for having redeemed us from our sins by sacrificing yourself for us. We praise you, Holy Spirit, for having sanctified us, for you gave us faith, and through faith cleansed us from sin. O triune God, graciously enable us always to believe and to obey and to worship and confess you, creator, redeemer, and sanctified, one God eternal and all glorious forever. Amen. And gathering all our prayers into one, let us pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, now and forever. Amen. All those who claim Jesus as Lord of their life are welcome at our table.
All our prayer is directed to the Father through Jesus Christ in the power of the Spirit. Let us now pray for the needs of the church and the world. And please respond, Father, hear us in your love. For leaders of the church, that they may proclaim the one true God by being faithful to the will of the Father, obedient to the teachings of Jesus Christ, and sensitive to the promptings of the Holy Spirit, we pray, Father, hear us in your love. For the world in which we live, that people may reject false gods of power, pleasure, and prestige, and come to know and worship the one true God in sincerity and truth, we pray. Father, hear us in your love. For all who are without hope, because of illness or poverty or persecution, that the Holy Spirit may bring them comfort and peace, we pray. Father, hear us in your love. That the outpouring of the Spirit on believers may strengthen their commitment to the task of transforming the face of the earth and putting an end to war, we pray. For those who have served their country in its hour of need, especially for those who gave even their lives in that service, we pray. Father, hear us in your love. We also pray for Karen Carter, Cheryl Jennings, and please offer your own prayers in the silence of your heart. We pray. Father, you sent your Son to redeem us and the Holy Spirit to dwell within us. Draw us even more deeply into the life you share with us. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated for a moment. I'm aware of a couple of people we want to pray for today. Uh, on the good news part, we want to pray that Jenny has a nice vacation with her family in Orlando this week. I also want to pray for my grandson who just turned 16 back there. So. On a more serious note, but important note, I want to welcome Robin. Robin is up from Florida, dear cousin of Beth. So I'm going to pray for Robin. She is an adult caregiver for a special needs daughter that is 24-7. She was able to get away this weekend. We're really glad you're with us. You have our prayers of prayerful support. Okay. I also want to acknowledge um, Kathleen Fitz and Rod. This week, uh, that young lady that died in the drowning accident in southern Ohio, maybe many heard about, she went to she went to University of Ohio, Ohio U. I don't know where she was going. Cincinnati. Her grandfather was married to your sister, right? Yes. So, so you all, <laughs> that's all connected. But you were at the, you went to the funeral? Yeah, it was, it was a group of more than a thousand people there. Thousand people. So we lift up that family and uh, keep them in your prayers. There are a few announcements this morning. Um, Bible study continues Wednesday at 6.30 in Tom's room. You're invited uh, to be there uh, for a study and also uh, fellowship. The next men's gathering is June 15th at 5.30 in the pavilion, uh, weather permitting, of course. 
And uh, finally, uh, Greg has an announcement about the House of Prayer. Um, yes, this is for the House of Prayer. And uh, in Matthew 18, 20, it says, For where two or three have gathered in my name, I am there in their midst. Uh, I never, uh, I personally believe you're, you never waste your time when you're in prayer time. And that's my personal opinion. And uh, anyways, the House of Prayer has a prayer meeting every third Sunday. Uh, we've run, been running this since about Easter. And it's the third Sunday at 7 o'clock. And our focus is on God in our country, restoring our families, healing, empathy, just to name a few things. But uh, we, would, we will be meeting in three weeks from today at 7 o'clock. And we'll give you a reminder as this gets closer. And we'd love to have you. And I, I think it would really be worth your time. Thank you. Please stand as you're able, and we'll pray our final blessing together. We are one with each other in love, made one in Christ. May this unity grow to the fullness of Christ's loving union with you, and may our gracious God bless us always. Amen. Let's go in peace.